Hi again folks, this is a meter I have had for a while and it's a weird one because I can find literally no information about this online. Um, when I bought it, it was called the Prognose, that was the name that it was given. Um, looking in the instruction manual, uh, the sort of direct translation of the name it's given in the manual is the forecast. So it's a weird one whether or not do I call it the prognose or do I call it the forecast. But it seems to be typing in prognose Russian Geiger counter Russian survey meter. The only phot photographs that come up are either this item, as in this exact item when I bought it, uh, or from a sale from a couple of years ago. So as far as I can tell, there has only really been two of these available for sale in the last couple of years. Now, the meter, as you can see here, looks very, very similar to the DP5 A and B. And in fact, I have a DP5 A here, which I'll put side by side. So you can see there, it looks a lot like the DP5 A and the DP5 B, except that it has external connections, removable external connections for the probe. So I'll put this to the side again. Now, because the box is so big, I'll do the initial part of this video like this, and then we'll move everything down closer when I get all the bits and pieces out. Now, it uses three SBM-19s in this probe here, and then it uses an SI-8B uh, pancake probe here in this one. Um, it's for detecting gamma, beta, and X-ray radiation, surface contamination. Um, the little information I was able to find out from the person I bought it from said that it was, it, it, they think that it was sort of a, a home personal use survey meter. And then other people I spoke to said it was used on submarines. So I, I really, really don't know. And I don't want to say for certain that's exactly what it was for. Now, the probes, the two different probes you can put on here. So you can use the SBM 19 one or the SA8B here. And then we have reset switch, we have the, whether you want uh, beta or gamma. Um, we have the little attenuator here so you can get the voltage correct. This waterproof cap underneath that is for an external 12 volt connection. Because yes, this unit runs on a 12 volt battery, which I've never seen before. It usually runs on uh, 3 volts, but uh, no, this runs on 12 volt. And reading the manual as well, it also says this is waterproof to meter. Um, which after taking it apart and having a quick look, I don't know how that's possible, but it seems to suggest that it's waterproof, but okay. Um, as well as that, it comes with a few extra SBM 19s. Now I have tested all of these tubes and they're all working perfectly uh, and they're all detecting radiation fine. Uh, I'll put that back in the box there. And what I'll do is I'll lift this camera up just very, very slightly so you can see the rest of the box. Now, it comes with an instruction manual here, uh, just to let you know what's in the box. And then underneath here is a little Strontium 90 ingot check source. And that is number five now of those that I own. I have quite a few of those now. So I'll put this back down. Now, the good stuff about this meter is it looks awesome. It comes with an SA8B Pancake Probe, which is awesome. And it comes with, at the moment, six SPM-19 tubes. Bad part is, it doesn't seem to detect radiation. Now, that is either because I'm not detecting, you know, it's, I don't have a high enough source. Uh, but according to the manual, the check source there should register in this. Now, it'll do a zero to 5,000 5, ronk in an hour. So... Looking at the settings, it should be able to detect background and it should be able to detect the check source there from the Strontium 90. But I'll show you now, it does work to a degree, but uh, we'll get this box out of the road, we'll get everything out of the box, we'll get it all on the desk, get the camera a bit closer, and uh, yeah, you can have a bit of a, a closer look. Okay, so we look at the meter itself a little bit more closely here. So hopefully you can see that okay. So there's a little attenuator to get the voltage correctly. Now you have to get it up to eight for the voltage to be correct. Um, you need 400 volts to uh, run these three, or run the three tubes and the, uh, the pancake probe there. Then you can see the different modes. So we have off, 
Then we have PEK, so that's what you would switch it to then to set the voltage. First one is 50, so that's 0 to 50. 0 to 200. 0 to 500. And then 0 to 5000 for the highest scale. So the scale goes from 0 to 10. So you would then simply multiply by each to get to the, uh, the desired level. We have a reset switch. Uh, that is to zero, so if it's not sitting at exactly zero, you can take that off and you can use a screwdriver to get the display to zero. We have a switch that goes between beta and gamma, so at the moment it's on gamma, that's it back on beta. 12 volt power supply there for an external power supply, and then we have the input there for the probe. So you can see how similar it is. I mean, it's, I would not be surprised if this is exactly the same base for the DP5A and the DP5B. It's probably exactly the same. Now, I think I have these finger tight, but uh, when I got this, these were sealed with wax. Um, you can hopefully see there that I have just dug the screwdriver in to undo these. I think this one is undone. There we go, take that out, put those there, and then separate the unit. Now the thing I was saying about being waterproof, there there isn't really a seal here. Um, but that is what the unit looks like when you take it apart. And I've done a little modification. Now the original 12 volt battery would have gone in here. Um, I do not have access to Russian 12 volt batteries or Soviet 12 volt batteries. So I have soldered, soldered that on, which you can see how good my soldering is. That is just broke. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put on a little clip there just to hold that in a second. But uh, yeah, I put that on just to, uh, get an external 12 volt battery onto this. But we'll put, pull that to the side for a second. Instruction manual, pretty decent. I put it all through Google Translate and it was pretty straightforward. Um, the probes, there's the first probe, the large flat probe. So you can see here we have a, an aluminum drawer here and inside then are three SBM 19s and uh, I'll Take this apart in a minute, you can have a look inside. But uh, that is uh, quite a hefty bit of kit there. And then we'll move over to the SI8B Pancake Pro. So this lid unscrews and you can see we've got some little rings here. So we have this one there's a tiny little hole in it. We have that one with the huge hole and this one with a sort of medium sized hole. So depending on how much of the beta you want to block, you can actually put these in. So if you want to block pretty much all of it, you can put those in, put the internal ring on, screw it closed, and then you're just detecting gamma. Or you can uh, just go with that one and you're detecting a decent bit of beta but uh, you're blocking a bit of beta too. Or you can go with the, uh, the wide open one here and you can do that. Now, as I said before, I have powered all these up and I can hear fizzing from this, which you are supposed to hear. It is supposed to fizz when it's working, but just nothing happens on the display, uh, which is slightly annoying because it, it's such a cool looking device. Um, but I'll do a quick jump cut here um, I'll, uh, I'll unscrew this and you can have a look inside this and then we'll, uh, we'll power this up and let you have a look. So yeah, another quick jump cut. Yeah. So as I said before, I wasn't really able to find out much information about it. Um, the instruction manual says it was made in 1982, which uh, does look about right from the sort of design. But other than that, I have been able to find out very, very little. So there's the three SBM19 tubes, and as you can see, they are absolutely massive. Um, and I have tested all of these and they all work. Uh, so I think it's an internal problem with the meter itself, moisture has got in, and uh, it's just not allowing the correct voltage to go to these. But testing them with another meter, just using crocodile clips, yeah, works absolutely fine. But uh, yeah, I'll put this to the side here, just to create a bit of space and I'll bring the meter over. Okay, now what I'll do is just where that little weld failed, 
because I have been playing with this quite a lot to try to get it working. So I'm sort of constantly pulling the battery connector off on and testing it. So I'll just put these little crocodile clips on and that will give me the battery connection then, which it has done. Okay, and then I will put in, so I've just got this rechargeable battery. And I will put that on. There we go. Okay, here's the camera a little bit closer. And if I get that up to eight, that's so sensitive. Okay, there's it up to eight. Now if I connect the probe, get the eight as close to eight as you possibly can. You can see even the slightest touch affects the voltage. So let me bring that back up to eight. My dog barks in the background. Okay, I think that's as close as I'll get it. Now, let me turn it on now. Okay, now, as I said before, this fizzed, made a fizzing noise when it was switched on. And it's currently not making that fizzing noise. So what I'll do is I will get out some Strontium 90 here. One of my uh, couple of sources here. Okay. And as you can see, it just doesn't detect any radiation. Now, I don't know if you can hear that buzzing. Yep, it's fizzing now. I can hear the fizzing. Put that up in my microphone, you can hopefully hear it. Hopefully the microphone was able to detect that fizzing. But it is definitely making a fizzing noise, which, I mean, that's what... Pancake SIB, pancake, you know, probes generally make that noise. So I can't for the life of me understand why it's um it's not detecting them because these are the same ingots that are in the box and it doesn't do anything on with the box, uh, with the one in the box, and it doesn't do anything with these. And the same goes for both probes. And I just can't understand why they don't work. But yeah, it's a really lovely meter and I, I think it has just over the years, it was definitely never used because the seals were, you know, they were sealed when I bought it um, and the box was sealed as well. So if it has ever been used, they've resealed it very, very well. So I think it's the problem with being, it's just sat for so long that maybe capacitors have gone or something like that there. But the unit powers on as you can hear and as you can see. Um, but there's just no signs of life out of it, which is so annoying because it comes with such fantastic probes, which is really annoying because this is an excellent probe. And if it comes to it, I, um, I might, you know, utilize this in some way, shape or form that I can, uh, change the plug to work with, um, a couple of my other meters, but no, very annoying. And that is, as you can see there, it's bouncing up and down, but it's it's hard to know whether that's just me knocking it a little bit is making it do that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Very, very strange. Very, very strange indeed. Um, I'll show you that it is that the probes are actually working. I'll um, I'll get one of the SBM nineteens out and I'll connect it up to um, one of my other survey meters. And uh, I'll show you that the, yeah, the actually are detecting radiation. So yeah, another quick jump cut. Okay, this is the easiest way to do this. So I'm using the RM5 rate meter, which I did a video on 
back during sort of the height of the pandemic. Um, this was the cheapest Geiger counter you could buy at the time um, if you, you know, did the work yourself and sort of had to build a probe and everything. So there's an SBM20 in that. And uh, yep, still works really, really well. Uh, don't use it that much, but it does still work. So the easiest way to do this is positive to this end, negative to this end. And there is a little plus on that where you connect it up. And then to get the negative, you connect it up to there, gives you the negative. And then the center pin is the positive. So sometimes this works first time, sometimes it doesn't, you have to footer about with it. But if I do a battery check, we are positive. Uh, we are using a GM tube. Just have to make sure okay. okay, so that's set to three hundred volts. Okay. So that's on three hundred volts now running through here. And if I start bringing this strong to a mic closer. Turn the sound off. That is giving me... If I put the both of these right over the top, it's near 2,000 counts per second there. So it's about 2,500 counts per second. And I'll turn it back on again and bring these away a bit. So yeah, you can see the tubes are working fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the tubes. Uh, it's just the power from this is not being supplied, which is so strange um, because the unit was working absolutely fine. And when well, I say working absolutely fine, it powers up fine and you can set the, uh, the voltage, but just it doesn't appear that the voltage is going to the probes, which is a real shame. So what I plan to do is sort of do a little bit of, of reverse engineering on it, uh, take this apart and get the Pancake Probe out of it and just see if I can get it to, uh, to detect something with this meter. Now, if I can prove that this is working with this meter, um, I can hopefully find out what's wrong with this. And that will mean getting the uh, screwdrivers out properly. And uh, yeah, that will be an interesting job taking this apart. But stay tuned for that. I do plan to do that. That's just not gonna go into a box and I'm never gonna look at it again. I, uh, I will definitely do something with this in the future. Um, next week, I am going to be in Berlin for a couple of days. Uh, so I plan to sort of, do a video log of that, of all the places that I'm gonna go and see. I have a lot of things that I want to go and see. And uh, I will also be doing the review on the uh, East German decimeter. That is coming very, very soon as well, the RDC range of decimeters. Um, that video will be coming soon as well. So yeah, uh, Hopefully you enjoyed that. As I say, I was a bit disappointed that it wasn't able to fully work, but um, it's quite an interesting device. And hopefully somebody out there can shed a little bit more light onto what it was actually used for. And uh, yeah, just any information is, uh, is something else I can use, which would be excellent. But listen, folks, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. And I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.